I want to talk a little bit further about PTSD and uh, the travel spirograph. Now, I had said in my last video that I had assigned the uh, colors of the paper definitions so that I could have a reference point for what the designs might actually mean for application. Earth was yellow, blue was water, pink is people, and green is plants. And I felt frustrated because uh, simply doing different designs and not having any way to apply the math of them to anything uh, seemed like I was just going in circles and just doing design. So once I assigned definitions to the color of the paper, which is the background, then I felt I could apply the design to a meaning in my life. So I was fine. And then um, I had bought a second travel spirograph because I wanted a backup in case this one broke, in case the pens ran out, whatever. And I expected all of them to be yellow. And this one that showed up is red. And that threw me. Believe it or not, that threw me. And this is all about color and perception of the eye when you're drawing. So I had already defined everything with a yellow frame, a certain color paper for the definition, and I ended up giving definitions to three colors of ink. Um, as far as the ink definition, the green means the earth, the blue means common, um, and I'm going by that because mainly most people use blue ink to write with. Um, black would be also maybe substitutable for that. But when I was a kid, and when I would have been doing these originally, um, I used blue ink. Black was only for official documents. And the red ink means life. So, for example, if I do a green design on green paper, that would be um, earth on plants as a theme. If I do green on pink, it would be... Um, earth on people. So it would be, to interpret that, it would be a, a people's perception of earth, a plant's perception of earth, water's perception of earth. And that's how you build a language. You, you have two elements to each drawing then. Um, and green on yellow would be earth on earth. You're giving not only the paper backgrounds an element for application, but by applying a meaning to the colors of the pens, you're giving a secondary uh, definition to the finished design. So as I said, you've got two elements to a language now, the color of the paper and the color of the ink. And then the red Spirograph showed up, and because this experiment and what I'm doing um, is more or less all about the perception of color and the use of color, because the math and the design is already done for you in the way that you make the design, when a completely new color was introduced, I was thrown for a minute, and at first I thought, um, uh, slow and fast or light and dark and then knowing that the larger spirograph sets come with four colors of ink blue, red, green and black I said well what if I add black here what does that do and to define the black ink that would have to be nighttime. and then all of a sudden this became day and night so, um, if I add the black pens to the pens that I use for this project, I've gone from um, using just two colors that come with the set, which are blue and red, 
and expanding by adding two more colors, green and black. I've defined the paper that is available the most um, affordable and easy way. In other words, I am using, um, at first, just whatever comes in the kit, which was blue and red on white. And then as I refill the kit, I had to buy the paper. It came in four colors, so I had to define it. And then I felt because um, two colors may not be satisfying all the time for a language, I'm building a language. And when I've added the other colors of ink to match the larger Spirograph set, and when I've defined the ink colors for me, and now added day and night, I have a way to build a language. And this ties in with PTSD because of waking nightmares and um, dreams. Um, mine are about a car accident, and um, for the most part, but with the election and all the political um, unrest, even if whoever you voted for you believe in and you're just riding out the storm, there's so much going on right now that the, that, that politics themselves, liberty, freedom, all of that gets bubbled up. So this is actually helping tremendously, even though it looks like I've gone from a fine, fine artist to be a very simplified artist using kids' toys, this is actually um, a foundation that is stronger than any of the news or um, turmoil that might be going on in society. In other words, I'm redefining my own parameters to deal with my PTSD. Now, other people may not find this helpful. They may not have... Uh, waking dreams or waking nightmares. But w after I got hit by lightning, I don't sleep very often. And I can be um, doing anything during the day, you know, cleaning, um, shopping, anything, and all of a sudden realize I'm actually in a dream. And it could be because I got hit by lightning. But if you think of veterans and uh, shell shock, um, Yesterday, I devoted a day on my Twitter account, really, to remembering um, a young man who was killed in Afghanistan who was a friend of my son's. And um, I didn't know him very well. My son knew him. And the whole town has kind of adopted he, him before and after. He was very popular, very well-known. But at the same time, um, once he died in Afghanistan, we have bridges and ever parks. We have a lot of things named for him now. And it's both good and bad. Um, it's heartbreaking and yet encouraging. And, and if yesterday, some of the videos I posted on my Twitter account, they're all about him as a kid. Um, and I, by kid, I mean 20... 18 in high school and you know my son didn't go in the service he went to college and has a master's degree and um, you know he didn't go through what, what um, Nick went through and yet when um, Nick died my son couldn't speak and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all emotional now my son couldn't speak for about um six months. He couldn't even think about it. This was one of his good friends in a flag-draped coffin. And um, even people, I have PTSD from a car accident. People that know people um, that die for all of us. Nick died for all of us. He didn't just die for the people in my town or for my son, or for his parents. He he died for all of us. 
And when you have all this political turmoil come up, things like that become more sensitive. And um, even if you're removed from the immediate pain, like my son was, it struck him so hard that um, it changed him. So this is kind of what we're all going through again now because the threat of war is very real. Now, I didn't vote for Mr. Trump, and I don't believe in Mr. Trump. I think he committed treason. I think when he asked Russia to hack the United States, he committed treason. And I've had a very hard time justifying that um, in society. I may have to learn to live with that because they haven't arrested him, and I may not be able to do anything about it, and it's just my feelings and my opinion. So, but it's kind of there, and I have to deal with it somehow. And then in my case, I have the PTSD, and I lost my parents, and so I think triggers, when you have the country in an upset, then your own personal triggers start to get worse. So getting a simple toy, like a spirograph, and staying within these limits, it does limit you as an artist, but it also blocks all of that out. It becomes a safe zone because um, <clears throat> I'm defining what this is. So I've defined the paper. I've defined the ink colors, what they mean. I am now defining day and night. Now this will help me because I tend to do things automatically and then look at it afterward and go, oh, wow, look what I did. So I think what's going to happen is I'm going to grab one of these to do some drawings. And I may not even notice whether it's yellow or red. But somehow I'll figure out or I'll see that I I left the red one over here. So, gee, I must have been using that one. I really have waking dreams where I'm dreaming and I don't remember all the time what I've been doing. And then I'll wake up and find that this is on another area of the room than where I last saw it. Soldiers, um, I would think, go through the same thing. And it's a, probably a coping mechanism for the brain that when the trauma gets too bad, um, you have a waking dream because then you can distance your psyche from the reality of it. So anyway, this now has become the $100 project. And these are $10 a piece. So there's two of them, that's $20. A package of uh, 1,200 pads was about $11. Um... I could use the pens I have for the large set and use all four colors, but I've actually been buying stick pens because they're disposable. And I think part of the strength of this whole project is that you need to be able to just not have them matter. It's the doing of the drawing and not the art equipment. And keeping it cheap is actually better because it's easily replaced and I guess at some point you can think in the back of your mind that, gee, I can throw that away if it gets too upsetting. So, 10, 20. These, um, the green, for some reason, I got a box of 12 for $6. Um, the black, I think, is about 8 or $9. I've, I've allowed $10 for each of these. With the green... Um, for 12 something, I got like three boxes. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 for the paper. So we're at 70. Now, um, $30, the extra $30 into the 100 is going to cover, um, I've looked at different uh, notebooks, sketchbooks. Um, ways to contain the drawings if you want to keep them. 
that thirty dollars you would use to buy note cards. And if you're buying this for someone else, um, you may want to think of a couple of other things within that hundred dollar range. Mine is from a car accident. So I bought myself a matchbox car and the reason I did that is because this is a card just like the car I had with the accident. And this now is um, a reminder on my table um, that there are issues to do with my car. But the Matchbox car is smaller than I am. So whatever the issues are with the car are not going to overwhelm me. So it's a very good visual clue for whatever um, the trigger might be. With a soldier, it might be a little army guy. And then um, he or she can put everything on the army guy. Now, the other thing I bought and um, is a troll. I've been extremely vocal on um, Twitter about the politics and Mr. Trump. And I'm finding that I'm going in circles because I can't change what the government is doing. I, Like I said a minute ago... I have my own opinions, and voicing those aren't getting me anywhere. And they may be contributing to me not um, processing things correctly. So, on Twitter, everybody's calling everybody else a troll. And I guess the meaning of a troll is um, when you're just picking on someone to voice your opinion or call them names or be nasty or whatever. So, originally I said that was going to represent um, Mr. Trump, but as soon as I said that, I knew that was wrong. Um, The troll is really, right now, representing everything I don't understand. I actually had trolls when I was a kid, and they were fun little toys to take with me. And, um, but you don't understand them. I mean, there are no such things as trolls. They're funny-looking um they don't comb their hair you know they're they're just so different and that's why they're perfect in this situation because um aside from what people are calling each other on Twitter or Facebook or any of those that little guy is so odd that he represents whatever is odd and then a glue stick this was about $4 so seventy dollars for the major um components that you need to have two ways to speak in a in your own language um setting up your own definitions for the paper colors the ink colors. I would recommend using these as day and night um if you have waking dreams, but you could come up with two other definitions if you have two colors. And then the other $30 is um, for safety things like this. In other words, if if I get really upset about a car accident, I can go put this in a tin and pretend it's not there. Or I can put it outside and um, try to remember what part of the car accident is bothering me. It's a tool. And like I said, the troll is so odd anything you don't immediately understand, you can just in your mind say, well, you know what? That's with the troll right now and I don't understand it. And then the glue stick and um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is just using copy paper um, because I'm going to glue the different little spirographs to plain white copy paper. A ream of paper is about $5.00. And I was going to get a binder, but instead I got yellow manila envelopes, 8.5 by 11 size manila envelopes, like mailing envelopes. And I'm probably going to do a month at a time in each envelope. So I'll put all of January in one envelope, all of February in another envelope. So all of that comes to about $100 or just under $100. So 
now I also know, even if I work on this project temporarily for the PTSD, I also know that if, let's say I go back to painting or I go back to pen and ink or, or whatever I go back to, if I, again, have like a bad seizure or a downturn with the PTSD, this can be like a $100 emergency pack that you keep for anybody with PTSD because by by defining everything yourself, you are speaking about what is important to you when you do these drawings. And this is why Spirograph is so good for this because all of the actual thinking about the design is removed from this. It's already been done for you and you have millions of options of ways to do it. And so what you define is the use of color. And I think that ties in with PTSD and waking dreams and, you know, um, I'm defining red a certain way, but um, red, especially with car crashes or war, would be um, a color you need to keep control of. You know, um, part of what bothered my son about Nick was the way that he died and why he couldn't talk about Nick was the way that he died which I'm not going to talk about. Um, and so you have to control the colors that you perceive every day. When we live in our world all the time, we're perceiving colors automatically. And doing something like this with Spirograph, specifically for PTSD, is um, a tremendous, fascinating way to control your thought process regarding the PTSD and regarding anything that might be going on in society or in your life. It's a way to take colors, basic colors, four, that we see every day and make them your own. Because the designing is already done, because the kits are already pre-made, because what you're defining are the use of colors, it's a way to at least have four colors, or in this case, because of the paper and the pens, eight colors that you own. And then from that point on, you, you feel better and like you have more control. And part of PTSD is feeling like you're losing control. So, and again, this is just my opinion. I'm not a doctor or a therapist, but this is helping me with PTSD. And, you know, instead of like a $10 item, which I had said before, $100, I think, would get somebody just about everything they need to control through the use of color the thought process that they need for processing or living with PTSD. It's just my opinion.